Oh my back, I got a giant RTX 4000 and RDNA 3 update for you guys today. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Brilliant. Brilliant is a great tool for people of all ability levels who are looking to learn new skills or just brush up on things you might have forgot without having to pay the insanely high prices of taking classes, getting a mentor, or going back to school. Brilliant is in my opinion the best way to learn new things because it makes it fun and engaging with their hands-on approach to learning using clear and intuitive explanations so you stay engaged and don't get lost searching for answers on Google. Plus with its wide variety of courses there's something for everyone and personally I love taking a look at their chemical reactions courses as I've always found science to be a lot of fun. Not only that but it's completely free to get started. So if you're looking for a great way to learn new skills and you want to support the channel check out brilliant.org slash graphically challenged linked in the description or pinned comment but hurry because the first 200 people get an exclusive 20% off. Breaking news, I just let a log out of my hole and I threw up my back while lifting weights, so if I look like I'm in pain, I am. But with all that stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about RTX 4000 and RDNA 3 because there's been just a ton of leaks posted online recently, and in fact, it looks like some of the specs that we've been talking about when it comes to RDNA 3 in the past might have been wrong, and in fact, it looks like things have changed so much that Nvidia might actually be able to win this time around yet again. But we'll go ahead and talk about the RX 7950 XT versus the RTX 4090 Ti in just a little bit bit. First, we have to go ahead and take a look at the actual specs and leaks. Now, this information first originated from Greymon55 as well as Red Gaming Tech, but I'm going to go ahead and read what Greymon55 had to say about it, and then I'll give you my thoughts on it. So, the leaker Greymon55 posted this over on Twitter in regards to the RDNA 3 GPUs that are going to be coming out later this year. Quote, 12,288, 8,192, and 4,096. Then below that, he went ahead and actually wrote, quote, by the way, the performance goals remain the same and may even be higher. Now, this information that he posted here is definitely in regards to the upcoming RDNA 3 GPUs, and this is actually the shader counts of three different GPUs. Now, the GPU that I'm going to be talking about today is the one that has 12,288 shaders, and this is in regards to the top-end Navi 31 7950 XT, the same GPU that's going to be going head-to-head -head with the RTX 4090 Ti. And in fact, Red Gaming Tech just put out a video the other day as well, basically confirming that yes, this is very likely going to be the case, and he also has heard numbers of around 12,000 shaders for the top end SKU. So this is actually very interesting because in the past we were talking about 15,360 shaders, which would have been three times the amount of shaders that we see on the 6900 XT going up to the 7950 XT. And this is why we're hearing absolutely absurd performance numbers like three times the amount of performance because yeah, you get three times the amount of shaders, you get a clock speed bump and possibly even an IPC bump. And honestly, it's not something that could be completely out of the question. However, if we're talking about 12,288 shaders, I'm going to have to go ahead and disagree agree with Greymon55 because I honestly don't think that the performance numbers can be the same when you see that much of a decrease when it comes to the shader count and honestly I think this is going to make it so that like I mentioned earlier the RTX 4090 Ti could actually go toe to toe with the 7950 XT or possibly even beat it if Nvidia is going to push the power high enough to actually do so and that's what I want to talk about right now let's go ahead and talk about the performance and the specs of these GPUs and figure out you know who's going to actually win next generation based on all the leaked information that we have right now because honestly I think we have enough where we can paint a general picture of what it's going to look like and starting off with the 7950 XT taking a look at the specs here what we're talking about is AMD's top skew GPU with 12,288 shaders a boost clock of what I believe is going to be 2.8 gigahertz and I've heard 3 gigahertz plus but honestly guys if we're going to be fitting you know over twice the amount of shaders as well as a clock speed bump into 450 watts I think 2.8 gigahertz is going to be roughly the limit as this is apparently going to be a 450 watt car at least as far as I'm aware. Now, apparently it is also going to be having somewhere between 16 and 32 gigabytes of G6 memory. Honestly, I believe it's going to be 32 gigabytes on the top end SKU here, and then it's going to have a memory speed of somewhere between 18 and 21 gigabits per second, but I'm going to go ahead and be generous and call it 21 gigabits per second on a 256-bit bus, which gives them a total memory bandwidth of 672 gigabytes per second. However, we do also have to keep in mind that this thing's going to have 512 megabytes of cache, which is absolutely insane. It is definitely going to help out with that memory bandwidth. Now, taking a look here at the performance, if we do the math here and we take, you know, the 12,288 cores times two times the 2.8 gigahertz clock speed, and then we divide it by a thousand, what we're going to actually get here is 69 teraflops. Now, that's definitely a massive increase over the current 6900 XT, but it's nowhere near as high as some people were speculating over on Twitter of like 90 teraflops plus. Uh, yeah, it's simply, there's just no way they're going to actually be able to hit that with 12,288 cores. 
course, unless they crank those clock speeds to basically oblivion, but at that point, they're gonna need a lot of power, and I just simply don't see them doing that. But now let's go ahead and talk about the RTX 4090 Ti. Now here, it's gonna apparently have 18,432 shaders. Now do keep in mind that a lot of this information is basically confirmed by some data breaches that were posted online. So yeah, I'm actually pretty confident in a lot of these specs. Now the boost clock, I am expecting around 2.5 gigahertz. Now I know there was talk of possibly even higher than that, but frankly, I think that's gonna draw way too much power. Now in terms of the memory, I am expecting 24 gigabytes of G6X memory at a speed of 24 gigabits per second on a 384 bit bus, which is gonna give them a total bandwidth of 1,152 gigabytes per second. And it's also gonna have a massive cache increase of 96 megabytes, which yeah, that's absolutely an insane increase over the current RTX 3090. Now in terms of the performance, I am expecting that if we do the math here, 18,432 times two times 2.5 divided by a thousand, that actually does give us 92 teraflops of performance. Now, if we go ahead and we actually compare these two GPUs, it's starting to look like Nvidia has a major upper hand here because not only do they have way more memory bandwidth, but they also have way more cores as well as way more teraflops. However, teraflops in all this stuff doesn't necessarily tell the entire story because these two architectures are vastly different. And in fact, if you're watching my last video, I went ahead and actually did the math and found out that an AMD RDNA 2 teraflop is worth about 1.52x an Nvidia Ampere teraflop. So yeah, an RX 6000 series GPU gets 52% better IPC when compared to something like an RTX 3000 GPU. So if we keep that in mind, we actually do a little bit more math here. What we're talking about is not 92 teraflops versus 69. It's more like 105 teraflops on the 7950 XT versus 92 on the Nvidia RTX 4090 Ti, which actually gives the 7950 XT a 14% lead over the RTX 4090 Ti. So once again, we're in a situation where it's like, okay, it looks like AMD's definitely gonna win here. How could Nvidia possibly make up for 14%? Are they really gonna be able to boost their clocks that high? And no, they definitely would not be able to boost clocks that high to actually make up for that. However, we do have to keep in mind that I am actually expecting the RTX 4000 series GPUs to get a pretty massive IPC leap. So honestly, if we keep that in mind, let's say that they get 20% IPC over the current RTX 3000 series cards, which I actually could see happening. Well, then in that case, Nvidia could actually beat them by about 6%. Now that's not necessarily a lot. And honestly, AMD could also get IPC on their side. So at this point in time, it's starting to look like, you know, Nvidia could win, AMD could win, but either way you slice it, these GPUs are gonna be a massive increase over the current cards that we have right now. And they're also gonna come very, very close in terms of performance. So honestly, I think things are starting to get really, really exciting. Every single month we find, you know, just more and more information about these cards. It's starting to make sense. The picture is starting to come together. And if you wanna learn more information about the RTX 4000 series, as well as RDNA 3, I am gonna be doing some updated spec sheets over the coming weeks here. So make sure you're subscribed for that. But yeah, that's pretty much everything that I have to say in this video, guys. And honestly, I'm just super excited to get my hands on this next generation of GPUs. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think the AMD or Nvidia is gonna be able to win next generation? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.